I've had my 2020 iPad Pros for just a little over a day now, and no, I am not quite ready to post any major comparisons, let alone a full review of this product during the next few days. Of course, that content will come within a week or so, but in the meantime, I want to do a comprehensive performance test, or rather comparison, if you will, between the 2018 iPad Pro and the new 2020 iPad Pro, because the processor situation is really interesting. The previous gen iPad Pro rocked, or continues to rock, an A12X, whereas the new one rocks an A12Z, and I'm really interested to see just just how different they are in regard to synthetic tests or benchmarks and of course real world performance. So that is what we'll be discovering in this video but before we continue I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people and if you are a recurring viewer be sure to subscribe and of course click the bell icon and turn on all notifications. So here we have two 11 inch iPad Pros. We have the 2018 on the left and we have the 2020 model on the right. Of course, the camera modules on these devices give them away. And I recently transferred everything that was on this iPad onto this one. So it's the same settings, the same amount of storage, use the same applications, the same configuration. Nothing is different except for the background, as you can see here. So you can kind of differentiate the two because the fronts are of course super similar. So let me just straighten these out real quick because I cannot do a whole video with these, you know, all off kilter. So first, First up, we're going to do some synthetic testing, and there's not a better app to start with than Geekbench 5, and we'll run a CPU test here real quick. As you can see here, I'll just cover this real quickly. The Apple A12X pops up on here. This processor in the 2020 iPad Pro is just called ARM, but it is clocked at the same frequency, apparently. There is more memory or RAM in the 2020 model, as you can notice here, so 6 gigs, approximately 5.56, compared to the 3.69 or 4 gigs found in the 2018. But we'll see how that plays out as we test these devices. So first, let's run this benchmark. Mark. All right, so they just finished within a couple seconds of each other, and this is really interesting. If you notice, the scores are slightly better on the 2018 model by three points in single core and around like what 11 points in multi core. What the hell is going on here? I'm gonna run the benchmarks again just to be sure and see if we get any different results. And here we are yet again. The 2018 iPad is technically outperforming the iPad Pro 2020. And I'm not gonna lie, I ran these tests last night. Of course, I do prep some things before I make these videos. And in a couple instances, the iPad Pro 2020 did get a better multi-core score, but it was probably within a margin of error. So for all intents and purposes, according to Geekbench, the performance between these two devices is pretty much identical. And if you scroll down the little specification list or system information, you see pretty much everything is the same. The motherboard on the 2018 model is called J317AP. The motherboard on here is called J417AP. We have the same amount of cache, the same frequency, the same L2 cache. The memory amount is different, which will probably make a difference. We might see that, but yeah, um, everything appears pretty much the same between these two. But what does Geekbench know? Let's run an Antutu benchmark and see just how different these devices are. And I'm sorry this is sideways, but I'm gonna fast forward it anyway. <laughs> And here we are. We are done with the test. Not now, not now. And the iPad Pro 2020, thankfully, has a higher score. But as you can see here in the categories, it's pretty similar. As you can see here in the CPU category, the 2018 iPad Pro actually outperforms the 2020 iPad Pro by a bit. Of course, it's out of a lot of points, so I think the difference is pretty negligible, just like it was in Geekbench, although the score is a little bit higher here, which is really interesting. Uh, GPU scores are a little bit different. We get about 20,000 more points in this category, which might indicate that the A12Z's GPU is marginally better than the A12X's. The memory performance, of course, is better because you do have an additional two gigabytes-ish of RAM. So we have a score of around 74,350 with the iPad Pro 2020 and 68,740 with the iPad Pro 2020. And then the UX score was a little bit better with the iPad Pro 2020, probably because of that better GPU found with the A12Z. But who cares about synthetic benchmarks, you might be thinking. We're here to see real world performance with these iPads, and I could not agree more. While synthetic benchmarks do offer valuable insight, they don't dictate how devices perform entirely. So let's run some real world performance tests and see if we notice any difference between the two. So let's see about some app loading times here. I've quit everything to make it fair and both of these iPads are on the same Wi-Fi network. Yes, they are. So let's open up App Store first. 
and it opened up a bit quicker on the iPad Pro 2018. Did I click the icon faster? Who knows? We'll see. We'll do some more app openings here. Let's open up Spotify. It loaded a little bit quicker on the 2020 iPad Pro, but that was pretty much the same between these two. Let's close these apps. Next up, let's try Safari. Okay, that was basically the same. Let's load the Apple website. And it loaded a bit quicker on the 2018 iPad Pro. Am I pressing things faster on here? I don't think so. We'll see. Let's load another site here. Let's load, I don't know, Bing, because Bing gets no attention. And oh, it's loading slower on the 2020 iPad Pro. This device is not having a good day. These are both on the same network and they should perform exactly the same. And I think they do. I don't doubt the performance of the 2020 iPad Pro, but so far it seems like things are pretty similar. Let's up the ante here. Let's open up Minecraft. Three, two, one. Okay, so it loaded a bit quicker on the iPad Pro 2020. Maybe it's because of the additional RAM. Who knows? We'll see. But let's actually load a world here. Let's load my test world because this is kind of a CPU intensive task. And it loaded quicker on the 2018 iPad Pro. What the hell is happening? Maybe it's because of the battery amount. Maybe my processor is throttling or not performing perfectly on the 2020 iPad Pro because it has less of a charge. As you can see here, we have 96% on here, 60% on here as of right now. So maybe that is factoring in here. But again, as you can see here, there is very little difference in the CPU performance here. And as you can see, as we fly through this world here, things are pretty much equally smooth because the performance is very similar. Let's go back home and we'll open up Call of Duty Mobile. I've never played this game on either of these devices, so this should be interesting about how this loads. So yeah, a little bit quicker with the new device, but not by much. So now that we have all these apps open, let's see if any of them have to refresh. So we'll go back to the first one that we opened. We'll go to App Store. That didn't have to refresh. We'll go back to Settings. That's fine. We'll go back to Safari. That's fine. Let's go back to Spotify. It stuttered a bit, but I think that was across both these devices here. Maybe I don't have enough apps open to see a difference, so we'll open some more. All right, I've opened more apps. Let's see if there's any difference. So Minecraft. Okay, so both had to refresh. Interesting. So it doesn't matter how much RAM you have that still had to refresh. Let's go back to App Store. Still there. Let's go to Safari. So in everyday performance, I think that the RAM management between these two devices is excellent between four and six gigs. You're not gonna notice too much of a difference. Um, I'm sure if you have a bunch of tabs open in Safari or Chrome that you're gonna notice a difference. But like I said, when you have like eight to 10 apps open, you're not gonna have to refresh apps all the time. All right, so all the apps are quit once again because now we're gonna be doing some raw performance tests with LumaFusion where we're gonna be playing around with 4K video and exporting. So let's play back some 4K video right quick and see if there's any difference in playback, if there's you know dropped frames with the 2018 iPad Pro. I'm not seeing really any. I'll move to a shot with more movement, let's just say. So we'll start here and click play. And uh, as you can see here, both clips are playing just fine. Of course, with nothing edited yet. Let's add some kind of like color change or shift here. So I'll go to, if I can even remember, let's go here and then we'll change the color to warm up. Let's just say warm up. And then we can scroll down and increase the saturation to 1.2. And then we can, how about we retime it to 0.8x. So it's gonna be at playing at 24 frames a second, basically. And then we can press play and see how this renders out. And even with these changes, I am not seeing any playback issues with either of these. Um, maybe the GPU or the better GPU within the A12Z is doing a better job at running things, maybe just a hair better, but it's nothing that I can notice. But of course, we've yet to actually render some stuff, so we'll see how that goes. Now let's actually export a project that I shot and edited completely with this iPad Pro a couple months back. So we'll see how the export times differ between these two processors. So we're gonna export at the quality setting because I don't know how much storage I have on my iPad Pro 2018 here. We're gonna export in the H.264 codec. And yes, if you are observant, you may have just noticed that I chose completely different quality standards for the exports that I did here. I chose a 50 megabit bitrate standard for the 2018 iPad Pro and a quality one for the 2020 iPad Pro. So my results were totally botched. I messed up the test and in the interest of time, I'm going to conduct the same one right here at my desk as I'm editing this video. 
All right, let's line things up. We got 4K, we got 4K, we got the quality standard. We also have the quality standard, H.264, H.264, and then we got an estimated export time of three minutes, 40 seconds, space needed 4.34 gigabytes, file size 2.17. Those numbers match up 2.17, 4.34, and 340. It's saying the export is gonna take the same amount of time, so that's interesting. So let's see if that actually happens. So I'm gonna press off camera here, the export button. You can't see me, but I'm doing it. Three, two, one. All right, it's going. We're gonna sit here and wait. All right, the rendering is finishing up, and... Yeah, they finished at literally the exact same time. And it's funny because even though I messed up the quality settings initially, I got the same result in my, you know, messed up footage. So I'm just going to play through that because the result is the exact same. Oh, shoot. And they finished at the exact same time. With these tests done, does it mean you shouldn't buy? the new iPad Pro? Uh, and my answer to that is no. There are some welcome improvements, and I'm sure the additional RAM and the additional GPU performance will benefit you somehow. But from my testing, it appears that Z is pretty much equal to X. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. If you are considering a new iPad Pro or sticking with the previous gen 2018 one, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And be sure once again to click the bell icon and turn on all notifications if you do so. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.